president of Russia. George Bush, when he invited him to his ranch, he said that he looked into his eyes and these people are demonizing him, but he saw soul after looking into his eyes. Uh, Bill, uh, I mean, then Barack Obama wanted to have reset. Then all kinds of other people tried throughout two decades. You tried as well, and your visit to Moscow was a bit controversial. Some people were surprised you went and you look into his eyes. What you saw, and do you think that you have some extra position now to be like one of the EU leaders who have special, uh, uh, I mean, avenue to him when it comes to have some negotiations of tough issues? Because we are still in very acute phase where we don't know. So do you have special relations to Vladimir? No, I don't have any special relations to him, but I think it's necessary also in conflicts to talk to, talk to both sides. Um, when I decided to go first to Ukraine afterwards to President Putin, um, I talked about that with the President of the Commission, with the President of the Council, with the, the Chancellor of Germany, with the President of Poland, because he's one of the and strongest criticism about that. And, um, well, when I was there, I saw a man who is in his own war logic. Uh, before I um, go to Moscow, I was in Bucha, and so it was the first time in my life when I saw a mass grave. And I think it was necessary and it was right to confront him with that. I think it's necessary to talk not only with a phone call, it's only necessary, yeah, to look each other into the eyes. And you know, the Austrian position is really new now because um, in former times we always or often declared because of our neutrality it's not possible to do that or do the other things. Now we are really clear. We decided all sanctions, we support the delivering of ammunition and weapons, we can do it ourselves, but we support it. And I think um, if you have an opinion, you have to talk about that. And yeah, you have to confront him with that, and you have to um, always try to find a new way how to reach this person in finding a kind of mechanism for a ceasefire or to end the war. And this is the reason why the International Red Cross is talking to both sides, also to the aggression. It's necessary because, on the other way, there will be no war prisoners exchange. And um, the Secretary General of the United Nations is doing the same. I'm not naive. It's not. It was not a friendly talk. But I think yes, it's not now the time to feel comfortable. Yeah, we have to risk something for peace and the ceasefire. We have to risk something for the people in the Ukraine. And yeah, we have to do more than we do now. And maybe there were discussions, yeah, also, yeah. It is, it, I think it doesn't matter. I think the, 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 in democracies it's normal that there are discussions. It's necessary. This is democracy. There are no discussions in the Russian Federation. That's a pity. So I think other chancellors, prime ministers, should do the same. We have to confront him, we have to bring him back to the table to talk to Zelensky himself. Uh, because what kind of uh, scenario do we have for the end of this conflict? And all conflicts ended with negotiations. There can be a victory, but you have to negotiate what is after this. And in the question of wheat, I told it before, we don't have time. We have to find solutions now. And it's really a big question, what does this mean for the security in Europe? I will tell you something. We are in a special position in Austria, more than Slovakia is. Now we protect more than 75,000 Ukrainians. And at the same time, I have 21,000 asylum seekers from all over the world, Syria, Afghanistan, 21,000 now 
you know what does this mean for the end of the year? So it's a security question. What does it mean if there is hunger in the world? If North Africa is destabilized? 